What's up guys, my name's Brandon and I've been using iOS 14 beta 4 all week long on multiple devices and I wanted to give you guys an update on how it's been running. So we're gonna be taking a look at some additional new features and changes that were discovered after my What's New video. I'm gonna update you guys on the performance, the battery life. We're gonna talk about some new bugs, bug fixes, and more. All right, we have a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and get into some of the additional new features and changes that I did not cover in my initial iOS 14 beta 4 What's New video. And the first First thing is there's a couple of new changes inside of the music application. So I'm just going to pull in beta 3 over here. So I have beta 3 on the left, beta 4 over here on the right, and take a look at the download button up top, the little cloud with the download arrow. It's a little bit smaller here in this beta. Also on the right side of the songs, you can see it is a little bit smaller. And if we click on the download button, you can see there, there's a difference as well. So now we just get a red check mark, whereas in beta 3, we got a gray check mark with the downloaded text next to it. We also get a change to the add button up top. So if you wanna add this to your library up top, you can see before in beta three, it had a red background with white text that was in all caps. And then here in beta four, it's a little bit more simple looking and it's not in all caps. So just some minor changes there inside of the music application. We also get some minor changes to the glyphs inside of the weather application. So take a look at the clouds and the lightning strikes here on beta four compared to beta three. So we have more of like a flat look, more of a modern look than we had over in beta three. I actually really like the look of this. You can also see that when the sun sets, it's on the opposite side now. So take a look at the forecast for Friday. You can see there that the sun is on the opposite side from where it was in beta three. So just some minor changes here to the glyphs inside of the weather application. So I mentioned that we got the all new shortcuts widget in beta four in my original video, but I kind of just showed that it was a blank square there. And at first I kind of thought it was a bug, which I still think it is, but the way to get a shortcut in there is to tap and hold on the shortcut and then go to edit widget. And then you choose which shortcut you want to show up there. However, I still think that's a bug. I don't think Apple intended this to be just completely blank, a completely blank square. So for now, you just need to go ahead and hold on it, edit widget, and then select whatever widget or whatever shortcut you want to be in there, and then you will see the shortcut show up. Another change in beta four is when we go to delete an application, you'll see that we get some new verbiage. So instead of saying delete Instagram, you can see now the main text says move Instagram to app library or delete the app. So you kind of get more context now as to what you're actually gonna do with the application because some users could be confused by this since it is an all new feature. So we get a little bit of different verbiage here. And you can see now it says move to app library instead of remove from home screen and also delete app instead of just delete. So some minor changes there when you go to delete an application or move it to your app library. We also get a couple of new splash screens in beta four. So we got one for reminders. Then we got this one right here for notes. So you can see it just says find that note and it kind of just shows off some of the new features in iOS 14 like powerful search and new in this release, it basically shows top hits, which is also in the search. So just a small little splash screen there added in this beta. Beta four also brings back the headphone glyph when AirPods are paired up in the top at the status bar there next to the battery. You can see there that was removed in beta three, but now when you have your AirPods paired up and you're listening to music, it will show up in the status bar. And speaking of media, a lot of people also started recently reporting that 4K video is just now showing up for them on their iPhone and especially on the iPad. So it seems like it was a slow rollout to be able to watch 4K videos in iOS 14 on the YouTube application. So if you didn't see that before, you may see that now in beta four. And then a change that I missed in beta three, but I still wanted to cover it in this video is that in the find my iPhone settings, you'll see that enable offline finding is now find my network. So that's been changed deep within the find my iPhone settings. And then I also noticed that the Siri shortcuts widget here on the home screen seems to take less time to determine if you have that same application on the page. So before it would take like five seconds or so, but now it seems to happen instantly. So some minor improvements to the Siri suggestions widget. Now I've also noticed some other fixes as well. And one of them has to do with FaceTime. So if you guys remember a couple videos back, I talked about how FaceTime had a lot of major bugs. I think mostly in beta two, beta three fixed some of them, but I still had issues with FaceTime crashing. There was a time where I literally could not hang up with the other person because I went into the picture in picture mode, went into an application, and then the screen just went black and I couldn't force close. I couldn't do anything with FaceTime. It was a extreme bug 
And it seems now that in beta four, that FaceTime is pretty much fixed fully. I've not had any issues using FaceTime over the past couple of days. So thankfully, a lot of those FaceTime bugs have been fixed. Now, another bug that would absolutely drive me crazy had to do with bedtime. So I told you guys about the bedtime feature in beta three, how there was a time where I just could not unlock my phone. Actually, not just one time. This happened like maybe four or five times. I could not unlock my phone when I woke up and bedtime was enabled. I literally could not swipe up. Every time I tried to swipe up, it would just kind of put force me down. You know, it didn't make me enter a passcode or anything. I literally could not swipe up and I had to reboot my device. So I've also not had that yet in beta four. So I'm pretty sure that's also been fixed because I do use that every day and I'm sure I would have noticed it by now. Also, the clock widget has been fully fixed and it shows the correct time every single time now, even after a reboot. And I've seen some people say that theirs is still not fixed, which is kind of confusing to me because it's fixed on all of my devices that I have beta four on. So the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 10s Max, the iPhone 7 Plus, and my iPad, the clock widget is fully fixed for, and it shows the correct time. So not sure if you're still having that issue, what the issue is, but maybe you wanna go ahead and just remove it and re-add it. That should fix it for you because it's fully fixed for me here in this beta. And then I also heard that a lot of people had an iCloud messages bug fixed in beta four. So if you downgraded or if you just had issues with iCloud messages, so messages in the cloud, not showing up or not being able to fully download, that's been fixed in beta four as well. And as far as the widget showing up blank, I talked about that in my beta four what's new video, how I would update you guys if anything's changed. And luckily nothing has changed. My widgets are working perfectly fine. They've not shown up like full black or just empty one time. I've even rebooted trying to you know, make it do that and everything works fine with the widgets here in beta four. So everything sounds good, right? Well, no, because there are some new bugs in beta four. Now don't panic. They're not the worst and I don't think you should downgrade right away, but just hear me out. Just watch the full video so you guys fully understand everything. So first off, let me just show you some of these bugs. So the first one is where an icon got really, really big. So take a look at this. So this is the translate icon showing up really big. This actually just happened to me today and I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but for whatever reason, the, the uh, translate application shows up really, really big here. So that was a pretty funny bug, but there are also some other ones that actually make a difference in how you use your phone every day. And one of them has to do with messages. So this is probably the most talked about, or I guess the most commented issue that people are having with beta four is the messages application, probably something that you use every single day. So apparently a lot of people have it worse than me, but messages has also been pretty bad for me here in beta four. And it wasn't this way since beta one. So it's overall just pretty sluggish. And sometimes it will just freeze for like two to three seconds before I can even do anything inside the messages application. I also have issues with predictive text. Now this isn't just for messages, but I am typing here and I just wanted to mention it. The predictive text just seems a little bit off here in beta four. And it's really weird because I'll start typing something and then it will show up words that I've like never used before. And that's definitely a bug. And sometimes it will just like replace the word that I'm typing. It's like a, a common word, like maybe, I don't know, let's, I can't even type that, but sometimes it would just replace it with something completely random that would not make any sense in that sentence context. So just some issues with predictive text here in beta four. But like I said, I have seen a lot of people report issues with messages here in beta four. So just be aware of that. Now, another bug that I noticed is that when you go to the messages and you tap this little eye right here and you see the information for that person, I recognize how you cannot press call from here. So I believe this is a bug. This didn't happen in previous versions. So you can, you know, FaceTime, you can send an email, you can view info, but for whatever reason, the call button is grayed out. Now, another bug that I've seen a lot of people mention with beta four is that Instagram just constantly crashes. And for me, I've not had any crashes so far with Instagram. So I'm not really sure what's going on with some of these people, because like I said, I use Instagram every single day. You know, I'm in messages, I'm going in and out of messages, I'm watching stories, I'm posting, I have multiple accounts. I'm doing everything possible inside the Instagram application that would cause it to crash and it has not crashed on me once. But a lot of people out there are saying that their Instagram is crashing. So that's one thing to be aware of. Now that's expected in a beta. I mean, that's definitely part of the beta process. You're gonna have applications that crash. So you really can't be complaining about apps crashing because that's just part of the beta process. But I did just wanna mention Instagram crashing as one of the bugs here in beta four. There's also a pretty strange bug in beta four where it shows double the applications showing up inside of folders. So somebody sent this to me over on Instagram 
Instagram. So if you guys want to send over videos like screen shares of actual bugs in iOS 14, I would appreciate that just because I don't encounter all these bugs. You guys need to tell me, you know, things that you may be running into as well. So this is the little screen recording he sent me. So you can see that he has two folders down in the bottom. And when he zooms in on these folders, you'll see that there are like two of the exact same applications showing up in that folder. So he zooms in there and you can see, I guess it's ad block and it looks like that piff. So they're both showing up twice there in the folder preview. But when you open up the folder, there is just one of the applications. So that's another little minor bug here in beta four that I would assume is going to be fixed in beta five. So yeah, it seems like there's definitely more bugs added in beta four than fixed from beta three. So that's a perfect segue into talking about the performance of iOS 14 beta four. So in terms of raw performance, like excluding the bugs and the app crashes and things like that, it's excellent. I mean, it's definitely better than beta three and any previous beta. We saw that from the Geekbench scores and just how well games play, but there seems to be more bugs in beta four than in beta three. So it might feel a little less stable overall when using the phone every single day. Now, don't panic. Like I said, things will get better and none of these are really like things that break your phone or make it unusable. So I don't want everybody to just hear these bugs and just panic and think, you know, it's the worst thing ever. They need to downgrade. I think a lot of people forget that this is a beta. So just keep that in mind. And if you did hold off on updating, I would continue holding off until beta five. But once again, I don't think things are bad enough in beta four to downgrade your main device. I mean, like I said, this is a beta. And a lot of people just don't understand that or what it means or they just forgot. I don't know, but don't panic. Things will get better. We'll have plenty more betas to come. And we could even be switching to a one week cycle very soon, which we will be talking about here in a moment. So now let's talk about the battery life and battery life on the other hand has actually been pretty good for me. Now it's practically the same as beta three, but I have noticed about a three to 4% increase in my screen on and screen off combined time on a full 100% charge. So, I mean, that equates to maybe 10 to 15 extra minutes of battery life. It's really not that noticeable unless you really track it like I do throughout the week, but it does seem like the battery life is not worse, at least here in beta four. Now, of course, that's just my experience, but I am using this on multiple devices. I tested it on every device for at least one day this week. But as always, some are saying that battery life got better. Some are saying that it got worse. It's always a mixed bag with every single beta. Of course, that will depend on how you use your device. And there will be the anomaly of just somebody having bad battery life. But just know that will be fixed eventually. Apple does usually wait until the later betas to start tweaking the battery life and maybe even like 14.1 or something down the road. So I would not get too upset at the battery life yet. And overall, battery life isn't really that much worse than the final versions of iOS 13, like 13.6. So I really don't think it's too much to complain about right now, at least not for any of my devices. But enough talking about me and my devices. Let's take a look at what you guys had to say in the YouTube community poll. So as I always do, I asked you guys, how has iOS 14 beta 4 been for you so far? And you can see here that 11% said excellent, no annoying bugs. 24% said good. 7% said decent. 3% said terrible and 54% said they're not on iOS 14 yet. Now, this is a nice little improvement from the previous beta, beta three. So you can see there, excellent is still at 11%. However, the good went up by 1% to 24% from 23 and the decent went up to seven from five and the terrible is at three from two. So there's not as many votes yet. There's about half the votes. So not really sure if those can be compared, but you can see that's everybody's experience so far. So now let's take a look at some of these comments. Now, the first thing that somebody commented with the most thumbs up are some common issues that I pretty much already covered in this video. Instagram crashes randomly, clock widget is still messed up, keyboard misplaced, which the keyboard, I've not had any issues in beta four, but that was a major issue in beta three. And then of course, battery drains is always going to be one of the top complaints, no matter what version or what beta you're on. And I also wanted to briefly talk about the battery life here because I asked specifically if battery life has been better or worse for you. And you can see here, some people are saying worse. Some people are saying way better. Some people are saying it's like the best they've ever had. And you can kind of just read through here, much better on iPhone 11, worse, about the same, better, better, significantly better better same here and you can see there's quite a mixed bag of results there cod mobile isn't working it's crashing so this is one thing also that a lot of people have talked to me about cod mobile does not work in beta 4. of course they will have to update their application for that to continue working also a lot of people have asked me about pokemon go 
I don't think Pokemon Go is going to be working until iOS 14, the final release is out in at least a couple of months from now. So don't get your hopes up for that. Ermon here said that notifications randomly become large when I'm playing Minecraft and they also sometimes slide to the left on my iPhone XR. So not sure at all what he's talking about there, but apparently it happened in iOS 13 as well. iMessage crashes every other time I open it and the camera app will sometimes never open and focus to get a shot. Now, the camera app not focusing, I have heard people talk about that. I've not experienced this myself, but that is an issue that some people are facing there as well. Brent here says that iOS 14 beta 4 is running perfectly on his 2020 iPhone SE. It seems like eight people also agree with that. So some people might be jumping the gun and leaving these comments really early because see here, somebody said at first it was a buggy mess, but over the course of a couple of days, it became very fluid and stable. The super relaxed said that got it access completely froze his iPhone. He had to force restart it, but a lot of bugs are fixed. Then you can see here Cheese Touch said that YouTube isn't as buggy as it was, but I've experienced some crashes like on Twitch or Instagram here or there. And you guys can go ahead and read through all the comments. I can't read through every single one of them on this video, but I did read through every single one of them before recording this video. So if you guys are interested, or if you just wanna add in your thoughts there, you could do so in the community tab as always. Now let's talk about a potential release date for iOS 14 beta 5. So since we're on beta 5, this is around the time that Apple likes to switch to a one week release cycle. Instead of waiting two weeks between betas, now is around the time when they switch to a new beta every single week. Now iOS 14 is pretty stable for the most part, so there's a chance that they don't switch to one week this early, but there is also a good chance that they do. But once again, it's Apple, we really never know what to expect, but if I had to take a guess, I would think that we would get beta five next week. So the week of the 10th, I would think maybe on the 12th, would be when we get beta five. But of course, if it does not come on the 12th or the week of the 10th, then it will come the following week, the week of the 17th, likely on the 19th to be exactly either one or two weeks from the release of beta four. But as always, make sure you guys are following me over on Twitter and then also be in the Discord chat as well. That's when you'll always be notified when a new beta comes out before I make a video here on YouTube. So yeah, there you have it guys. That is my follow-up review on iOS 14 beta four. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, I would appreciate giving this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss all the content coming on iOS 14 beta 5 and every future iOS 14 beta. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.